Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing another comparison video between inexpensive materials and more high quality, <laughs> more expensive materials. Um, but I know it can get quite pricey to purchase all the paints, brushes, and paper. So what I'm going to be doing today is comparing um, the difference between paints and paper and give you a better idea of what might be more valuable for you to purchase first if you're saving up for something, um, what will make the biggest difference in your paintings, paper or paint. So let's check it out. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna be going through all my materials. On my inexpensive side, I have these Prang watercolors that I got off Amazon for $16, but you can find them cheaper, um, I believe at Walmart and other places. They also come in a, a set of eight as well, which would be cheaper. This is 16. So these are my watercolors. Um, I have this brush from a very long time ago. I believe I got it at Walmart. Um, I think it was like a set of three for like seven bucks. It was fairly cheap, but I don't really use it. And then for the paper, I'm gonna be using Canson watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press. It's in a notebook and there's 30 sheets. So that's my inexpensive materials. On my more expensive side, I'm gonna be using Winsor Newton watercolors, which are these tubes, which I have put into my palette. Some of them are professional, which are more expensive, and most of them are cotton, which are these ones. But I put them in my palette and I let them dry overnight and they last a lot longer that way. Um, each tube can run from about four to sometimes ten dollars depending on the color or where you're getting them from for my brush i'm going to be using a princeton snap brush um, these aren't expensive but i find that they're rare to find in toronto i've found them many places um, they have them at curry's art store and they also have them on amazon um, but i haven't seen them many other places so but these are my favorite brushes so i'm going to be using those and for paper i'm going to be using arches watercolor paper it is 140 pound cold press paper and 100% cotton. There's only 12 sheets in the Arches watercolor paper and this one has 30. Um, when I do use Arches, what I do is I take my cut, my paper cutter and I cut it into quarters. That way I only use a quarter at a time and I'm not wasting full sheets. But that's the paper I'm gonna be using today. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the inexpensive watercolors. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be testing out both paints on both papers using both brushes, just to kind of get a feel of which may make the most sense to purchase first. If you're not ready to purchase everything, um, it can get quite expensive. Um, and people have asked me, what do you think I should buy? Should I buy the watercolors or the paper? And so we're gonna test it out, which one makes the biggest difference. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my Canson watercolor paper and my Prang watercolors and my cheaper brush. So I'm just gonna start off by doing a simple rose. So these are all dry. You just put your paintbrush in there with water and I'm just going to do some squiggly lines, circular lines like this. This is how I do my roses. I'm gonna add a bit of water and I'm just gonna put some more pressure on there. Now already feeling the brush, I can feel a difference in the sense that it doesn't snap back to its position as easily as my other brush does, which is what I really like about it. It's stiffer and it's easier to control. So that's an upside of my other brush. Now I'm just gonna go in with some darker color so I can do like some Darker color bleeds, let's see how it reacts on this paper. Okay, and the purpose of this is you want a seamless bleed, right? So it kind of just goes from dark to light without having weird patterns. That is the goal of why I do this with my florals, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to uh, create some leaves. Now I don't really love the greens that they have given me. They're pretty bright and kind of, they're not really real kind of greenery colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dark 
bright green here. Wash off my brush and I'm just going to add some purple to it. And it kind of creates a nice hunter green. Okay, and so usually when I use, or when I do my leaves, I will gently touch the floor, the florals and then kind of let the colors bleed into one another. And so far I can see the red is kind of just bleeding right into there and not in the way that I want it to. You can see some of the red going throughout. So what I'm noticing with this paper already is that one, it dries fairly fast and two, it pools really easy. The watercolor just seems to sit on top rather than soaking into the paper, which is not necessarily what you want. Because then when it starts to pool, when it dries, it gets these weird patterns like that. Okay, that was a mistake. That's okay though. Okay, so now I'm going to use my Windsor Newton paints and create the same flower using my red paint. Let's see the difference. So same flower, squiggly, circular lines. And then I'm gonna add some more water and use more pressure. See, so yeah, it's stiffer and it kind of just snaps right back to place, which is what I like about this brush. Just see strokes around. Okay, I'm gonna go back in. Now the color I can already tell is a bit more vibrant, um, but I am getting some weird um, patterns and it's already dry right here. And then it's pooling over here and I use the same amount of water. So it doesn't seem to be spreading out like this paint does on the cheaper paper. It's kind of just sitting there and not really bleeding and creating some odd patterns. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my green here. I touch it gently. Yeah, that color bleed. Did the same thing over there and that's that happens because there's a pool of water right here and so once you touch it with more water the color comes right through and that's not the effect you want that's not the paint that's the paper okay so just looking at it the cheaper paints react better on this paper which is interesting because you think if i at least had more expensive paint it would react better but it's had some weird patterns there that I'm not too fond of and while you still get those watermarks there it seemed to blend out a bit better but you don't get that dark to light it just kind of went everywhere so that's interesting okay so now I'm going to do the same thing but on arches watercolor paper so I cut my arches watercolor paper into half and now we're gonna try it out over here. I'm gonna try a different color just to <coughs> make it interesting. Excuse me for my coughing. I do have a cold. I've had a cold all winter. That's called Canada. <laughs> the weather sucks. Okay, so I'm taking this like purpley color and I'm just gonna do the same thing on this paper. Okay, squiggly circular lines. The color is nice and bright, which I like. I'm just adding water to make it lighter towards the edges. And I can already tell that the water is not pooling. Also, it will pool if you do have a lot of water, but it won't pool as easily. Wow, look at that. Look at the way the paint reacts. Oh, cool. 
That's the kind of reaction you want. You want that seamless light to dark without funky patterns. That's what you're looking for. And this is with the praying watercolors. Interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to take that green I made and I'm just gonna touch it lightly. Mm-hmm. Put a bit more color into that and just tap the bottom. You can already see the bleed is not reacting the, the same that it did on the other paper. On the other paper, that purple ran right all through because it was pooling. This one is just gently staying there. Very nice. Okay, and that's with the praying watercolors, so that's pretty good. And that purple is really nice and bright and vibrant on this paper. Okay, so let's try out my Windsor Newton. Okay, I'm gonna take my dioxazine purple over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Some squiggly circular lines. Add some water and move it around so it doesn't pool. <clears throat> now this paper is a bit more textured so it takes a little bit more effort to move the paint and the water around, but it's worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna take my color and I'm just going to do the same kind of tapping technique to watch it expand out and it does the same kind of thing. It doesn't go as fast and as far, but it still bleeds out, which is nice. That one seemed to bleed out quite quickly. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to take my green and I'm going to gently touch it. That. Okay, I'm gonna create a bit more of that green by mixing my dark, my hooker's green dark and some mauve to get a nice dark green. Okay. That's the color I wanted. And as you can see, it bleeds nicely, it stays put, it doesn't go everywhere. Hmm. Like that. Okay, so now once all of the paintings are all dry, we're going to come back and we're going to compare them and I will tell you which one I think is the best to invest in. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on both products. As far as brushes go, um, both worked well. Um, I just like the feel of this one better. So if you can find a stiffer brush, if you just go to a store and you can kind of touch them and it's a little bit stiffer, it might work better. That's just my preference, but it's totally up to you. I suggest trying different brushes, but in my opinion, they didn't really matter too much. Um, what you don't want in a brush is something that will fray really easily and lose its shape and where the hairs come out. Once that happens, you know, just get rid of it. Okay, so drum roll. <laughs> okay, so what I notice on the Canson watercolor paper, the Prang, the cheaper watercolors, ended up working so much better than the more expensive ones, the Windsor and Newton. Both ended up with some funky water patterns, but that is because the paper does not soak in the watercolor as it should. It kind of sits on top and then as it dries, it creates these odd watermarks. Also, when you have the water that sits right on top, the color bleeds will kind of go right into each other and they won't bleed the way you want it to. Although, if this is the kind of style you're going for, you know what? By all means, go for it. I'm not saying my florals are the right way and the only way to do something. Art is subjective. Whatever you like is up to you. Um, there's no wrong way to do art. 
So take everything I say with a grain of salt. It is really your preference and up to you. But for the florals that I do, I want a really nice blend and like a seamless blend. And if I was doing something more abstract, this would be fine. But for what I do, this is not ideal. So if you are gonna use cheaper paper, I suggest you go with the cheaper watercolors and that's totally cool. And then here, both actually reacted pretty well. Um, right here, you see there's a bit more watermarks. It's not as harsh as these. Um, it's actually kind of cool, but that might be because I could have added a bit more of the color around, um, maybe if I did it differently. But so far, the prang didn't perform horribly at all. The color blends, like the bleeds from the flower to the, the leaves are actually quite nice. Um, they're seamless, you don't see like a weird pattern from the green to the purple, which is excellent. Um, it's very similar to the Windsor & Newton. So really, I think you could go with buying more expensive paper and using the cheaper watercolors. Honestly, like color-wise, they're both vibrant. Um, I think these ones reacted a bit differently. They didn't shoot out as much, but the fact that you get this nice seamless blend it gives me hope that this kind of was just me, you know what I mean? And with some practice, um, this kind of effect wouldn't happen because really that's what it should be doing. So my final thought is if you are going to spend some money and invest some money into a certain material, I would go with better paper. I think you can get away with using praying watercolors, which are the cheapest ones that I could find that perform really well. And then putting your money that you save up into Arches watercolor paper. Yes, there are only 12 sheets, but like I said, I cut them into quarters and they last a lot longer. I don't waste any scraps. So if I do like a five by seven and I have, you know, a strip right here, I'll turn it into a bookmark, okay? So if you are able to find um, Arches paper for an affordable price, um, even if it's just a one-time thing, you know, practice on your Canson or whatever cheaper paper you have. And then when you feel like you really want to produce something to either sell or give away, invest in some arches. And those are my final thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed the video and it was helpful and informative. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.